I feel like roller derby gave me a piece of my identity or it certainly unlocked a part of my identity that I've not fully explored before and that was this more confident strong assertive woman um, rather than being a mum a daughter a wife a sister all of a sudden I was Beatrix what was the question what does it bring to your life oh I had another thought that's why I couldn't read um, it brings to my life confidence as well like I feel super confident in Royal Derby in a way that I don't in the rest of my life, which is it's nice. I think Royal Derby is a space where um, you can, you don't have to be afraid of being strong or smart or taking up space or not apologising for taking up space. I think Royal Derby does attract um, like people who maybe felt on the fringes of sport or even society a little bit and um, you know they're looking for somewhere to be who they are. Um, very quick. Um, my name's Kate Push. Uh, so I'm Rollo Tomasi. Um, I'm Penny Block. Hello, I'm the lovely Beatrix and I am the commentator for Rainy City Roller Derby. You don't just start Rainy City. Yeah, I know that, but it's like, I'm not starting the league. <laughs> the names. Uh, so mine came from LA Confidential, which is one of the best movies of all time. Um, I got it because I really like cake. Um, mine is after a stamp. <laughs> There was an alternate one. <laughs> don't know if you want to hear about that one. Yeah, what's um, one? Victoria Clunge, <laughs> which is so awful. How to play roller derby. This all-win sport is played on a flat oval track. Play is broken up into two 30-minute periods, and within those periods into units of play called jams, which last up to two minutes. There are 30 seconds between each jam. During a jam, each team fills up to five skaters. Four of these skaters are called blockers, together known as the pack, and one is called a jammer. The jammer wears a helmet with a star on it. The two jammers start each jam behind the pack and score a point for every opposing blocker they lap each lap. Because they start behind the pack, they must get through the pack, then all the way around the track to be eligible to score points. Roller derby is a full contact sport. However, skaters cannot use their heads, elbows, forearms, hands, knees, lower legs or feet to make contact to opponents. Let's have a look at some now. Roller derby oh, brains. Heavy, Happiness yeah. to my life. It's a, it's a brown paper bag, but I mean, like, <laughs> um, some really good friends. You pick the heavy box, <laughs> and I have an empty shopping bag. That's the most useless bloody thing. I tried to pick up something heavy. <laughs> and yeah. focus and drive on an activity yeah. that I'm good at. Oh shit, that's my clothes. <laughs> they just fell out. They just fell out my bag. Have we just left our dirty clothes here? Yeah. Is it not a laundry service here? What kind of place is this? If you let it roll down, we can just fill up your whole yeah, life. <laughs> See you, Barry. Hello. For me, the Royal Derby community is, it gives you friends without having to put any effort in to make friends. <laughs> Playing a sport together, I think you get a really great connection. I'm really sorry, it's all my fault. I don't understand them. 
<laughs> there are people and their emotions and their thought processes. Which you wouldn't get probably just from meeting someone, chatting with them. And I checked my wig mode on my skates there. No. Honestly. At least I checked. So it kind of speeds up your relationships. So you know people a lot better. Um, and like you might not know what they do for their job and what their pets are called or um, anything like that. <laughs> Who they've got at home. Yeah. Um, but you know them as a person, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And like, we can do magical things. Yeah. Magical things. Yeah. Magical things. Pets get together and do magical things. Yeah, but not like that, right? understand that that's true but you don't realize that you're prepared until you start to play and actually completely off you know um we ended up in d1 and we all thought we were unprepared but then we remained in d1 every season after that and we did really well in that tournament because we were prepared. we didn't think we were but we were do you know what i mean and everyone is in the same boat with this covid thing and lack of scrimmage time and all new players and everything like that so I want you all to kind of put it out of your mind that you're not prepared. This is exactly where we should be. And you're all in the exact right place, mentally, physically, and as a team for this game. This isn't a championship game. This is the right game for you right now. So everybody's prepared for this game. They aren't prepared for what about to get. Yeah. <laughs> you are completely prepared. <laughs> I remember my first game, it was the Great Yorkshire Showdown in October 2010. They didn't have um, enough skaters to do it, so it was kind of like they needed me. We got there, um, everyone got their war paint on. My first jam, I got up, uh, skated to the pivot line, and then just fell over. I was like, right, okay, this is how it's going to be. I think I get quite easily distracted and um, f find it hard to focus on things for a long period of time. I think there is a similarity between roller derby and gardening because when you're doing each you can't really think about anything else like with when I'm watering my plants or weeding or planting seeds, I'm thinking about that. I'm not really thinking about other things. I want, I want to make sure that I give everything so that this thing grows. And it's kind of the same in roller derby. Like you go on track and all you're thinking about is what you need to do in that moment. So I think there's definitely some similarities there. At the start of COVID, I was definitely ready for a break anyway, um, because the, the training can be quite, well, it was at that point, quite intense, but not a two year break. Um, and after six months or so, I was like, I need this, I need it back in my life. It, 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 I've not found anything that makes me feel as strong or like mentally capable um, in any other part of my life, so there's <laughs> that. I think people will be surprised. I think people are surprised when they meet you. 
Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I think so, because she's got like the plaits and the glasses, and she, you're, poli- you're not confrontational, not no, that not Derby's confrontational. confrontational, but it, it, you know, it, well, it is physically confrontational, you know, you don't necessarily think, oh, that nice person that you've been like talking to over yeah. lunch is like <laughs> off to go and batter some people at training, <laughs> you know. I've always struggled with my weight. My weight's always been a thing for me. Like, like, and as I say, like at school, so although I liked sport, like I played like lacrosse and things like that, but I was never a part of like the sporty crowd. So then when I came to roller derby, and it took like quite a lot of confidence for me to like want to go and play roller derby, um, because like big girls just don't play sport like that, you know. Um, but I took to it quite quick, and actually my weight became an asset like as a blocker it's it can be a a benefit like you still have to do like move quick you still have to have all the footwork there's still all the work that goes into it but suddenly I was like oh you just begin to see your body in a different light yeah roller derby's just a different world isn't it we are like kind of two old women I'll be really honest (laughs) we are not the life and soul of any party much to Mia's disdain actually like she's always like come out are you coming out afterwards like and we're like no we're going home for a cup of tea to lie down in the dark um (laughs) so (laughs) we're those people I was bigger and less fit when I started and I was very self-conscious about it and um actually the fitness took a little while to come um but even so um I had I could do well on track because I had other things so like communication was a big one um so the first time we did a scrimmage like a practice game I think um I suddenly started shouting about where the javelin was and I was the only person talking on track. And then everyone was really surprised. Um, I, that was like a skill I had that benefited the team, so that really helped me. You can sort of play to your strengths a lot more. Like You don't have to have the exact same skill set as everybody else. You've just got to have a skill set. and. Um, that really helped me early on. Your body doesn't really define you in roller derby. There's players on Rainy who are petite in every sense, and they're some of our like most incredible players. Um, and they are miserable to be hit by. We would be pretty beat up as well, you know, when we're intensely training like that. I mean, there's times we'd look in complete state, like you're just bruised and you ache, you get up in the morning and everything hurts. And <laughs> so you, you really do have to, like, have that love for it. I mean, does roller derby hurt? <laughs> yes, of course it does. The thrill is really that you're going super fast on skates, that you're using your body in a way that defies physics. You know, you're able to jump over an apex and just miss, just scoot your body around a little bit and miss an elbow or a hip or a shoulder, shouldn't have been an elbow, miss a shoulder or a hip that's going to try and stop you in your tracks. So yeah, it's dangerous, but with that danger comes the thrill and the excitement of cheating. Uh, cheating injury each time you put your skates on, I guess. I think the thing that was really appealing about it was here was this sport, this athletic sport that was coming and presenting itself as, you know, we've got these rules and we've got this game, um, but you don't have to be really straight laced you don't have to be super boring you don't have to um you know eat your proteins and drink your protein shakes and drink 10 bottles of water every single day to be a part of it we'll welcome you whether or not you're a natural athlete whether you've been an athlete in high school you're still more than welcome here to come along and if you're gay if you're straight if you're trans you know if you've got three husbands it doesn't matter we want you for you we want you to show up as your authentic self because when you're on the track, 
And actually, when you're in that heat of the moment of the game and you need somebody's body to get in the way of that opposing player, you want to know that you can trust them and that they're part of your family. I've been crying about this so much recently. Oh, There's so many kids. So many yeah, kids are going to see this. And they're going to be like, okay, I've got women in camp place. Yeah. And they're going to not just And that doesn't you. come from who you love and who you're with and how you wear your clothes and you know what kind of job you do. That comes from um, building that family together. And part of that is the acceptance that Roller Derby brings and allows and gives to people. You could be the weirdest motherfucker in your family and you'd still be welcome in Roller Derby because we like the weirdos, mister. We are the weirdos, mister, yeah? We want you to come along and be part of us. It does attract those kinds of people, but at the same time, it's got this really commonality that's running through, which is, hey, we also play this really badass game and it's fantastic and you'll get hooked and you'll get addicted and you'll want to spend all your money and all your time doing it. Um, but it's still got rules, it's still got structure, it's still got a purpose. Uh, it's just perhaps presented in a different way to netball or hockey or whatever other boring sports are out there, football, I don't know. Well, from the start, everyone that I met in Roller Derby was really nice and supportive and friendly. Um, I, I remember when I was doing my new skater training, I had really awfully bruised knees and I couldn't afford to buy any knee pads and someone just went, Oh, here, I'm getting rid of these nice cushy knee pads, you can have them. And it didn't mean much to them because they were getting rid of them, but it really meant a lot to me and it stopped my knees from getting awfully bruised. My, my first game was in January 2012 for Birmingham and we played the other Birmingham team for the first time at a it's like an expo called Tattoo Freeze which was an expo for tattoos, ice sculpture and there was a roller derby exhibition as well. <laughs> but I still loved it. Um, and then like three weeks later I broke my ankle at training, but... <laughs> the nerves won't go away. I still get really, really nervous before games. Um, but it's just because you care and then because you love it and it's great. And it's once, once you're on track, you're just in it and you just, you can't wait to go back on track and you just want to go, you like more and more and more. And when it's over, you'll be like looking for the next game. So it's, yeah, it's good. Quite often, before I started roller derby, I'd walk down the street and then if I got in someone's way, I'd be like, oh, sorry, sorry. And like, um, roller derby kind of taught me that I don't need to do that. Like, I can pick this path and go, go this way. And other people, maybe they should move. <laughs> and it was our very first game. We were told it would be a closed door, so there would be no spectators. And it was in this amazing venue and we were super excited so we went there and it turns out there were spectators because they'd sold tickets to all their friends and family uh, but we were still in an amazing building and I think back then there was a lot of like trash talking that went on there was a lot of sniping and there was always like this oh there's drama derby drama between teams and things and um, you know I'm not saying that I didn't partake in it because I was a you know of course I did everybody did <laughs> but there was definitely some trash talk with this team and we went down there and we just played like... I know I'm always the hero in our stories, Rainy City's always the hero and that's because we are really good. But <laughs> we played so amazing and we absolutely trashed them in front of their friends and family and I loved every single minute of that. That was the greatest feeling because I was kind of on track being like, this is my team, these are my people, this is my... These are the people I'm supposed to be with and we were just like vibing on track and having the best time, you know, and I was like, what, what else is there in life except for this, having this group of people who are so in tune with you and really understand you and you understand their needs and you understand their wants and you're able to do it and do it so well. That was the best thing. Ha ha ha!
Ha ha ha! Ah! Ha ha ha! 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 Ha ha ha!